Hey all, this is Mr. Yeager. Uh, this is an introduction to rotation uh, for AP Physics. Uh, what we're going to look at today is really just terminology. Um, the, uh, we're going to look at rotational kinematics, so the terminology involved with that. Um, you're going to see a lot of similarities with what we, with the um, linear or uh, translational kinematics, the, uh, where you're moving from one distance to, a, oh, sorry, one position to another position. Again, in rotation, what we're looking at now is position doesn't necessarily change. It's just the fact that the object itself is spinning around on its own axis in some way, or spinning around on some axis is what we're looking at there. So we're going to go through quite a few terms. We're going to go through some initial formulas. And again, you will hopefully see a lot of similarities that, you'll, that we did back in just 1D kinematics is what we're, I'm really trying to connect this to. Okay? So here we go. So again, uh, this unit, uh, it, this initial page is just kind of showing you what we're going to cover in this unit, what you're going to see in some of my other videos as well. Um, you'll see the other ones pop up um, pretty quickly after this one. Uh, but we're going to look at rotational kinematics, so we're going to look at what's called angular displacement, velocity, and acceleration. All right. We add that word angular, which is basically the same angular, and the word rotational are basically synonyms. They, they are interchangeable here. We could call it rotational displacement, rotational velocity, or, or obviously more specifically, it is called angular displacement, velocity, acceleration. In a separate video, we will look at torque. All right, we're going to look at this again, just like we did that, uh, with the uh, other units. We're going to look at static rotation, what's preventing something from rotating, and then we're going to look at it in terms of Newton's second law. All right. So in this unit, while new and with new terms and material and, I mean, new equations, has so many similarities to every unit we have done before, essentially. And, I mean, you can already sit here and go, rotational kinematics was unit one, static rotation, static equilibrium, unit two, and then Newton's second law, dynamic forces, unit three. So we're basically reviewing it all, except now looking at it from a rotational aspect. After that... We're going to bring in rotational inertia, which that kind of needs its own little separate uh, moment to talk about. But that's bring, that brings us to angular momentum, so obviously something that just recently was covered is linear or translational momentum. And then we're going to look at rotational kinetic energy very quickly. So again, all this stuff, are I mean, you, the terms are not necessarily new. It's, again, just how they're being applied this time in terms of rotating along an axis this time around. So again, we're trying to transition from linear to rotational terminology to linear to rotational thinking. How do we look at a problem instead of looking at it from changing positions, you're just spinning in place. Okay? And so this is the kind of thing you're going to keep hearing me say. There are so many analogs. What I'm saying is there are basically the same principle being applied, but being applied in a rotational perspective rather than a linear perspective, okay? They both, acceleration is still going to mean a change in velocity. The object's going to speed up, slow down, or change direction, all right, is what we're looking at here. Direction, obviously, we'll talk about in a bit, too, what we mean by direction on a rotational method, a rotational meaning, okay? But... I don't want you to sit here and go, these are all brand new terms, and I have no idea what he's talking about. You absolutely should know what I'm talking about in terms of acceleration, in terms of velocity, energy, momentum, any of those things. We're just trying to apply it again in a different scenario, a different anal uh, analog. Okay. All right. So again, you will notice um, that the formulas are very similar, just with new symbols representing rotational analog symbols. But also, we will be focusing on rankings and, again, justifying why um, we're seeing certain results. Again, uh, it's the same as always. I mean, this is not new by now. We are much more interested, not much more, but, I mean, we, we use much more of the conceptual standpoint, describing, justifying, and then having the mathematical formula part support our answer rather be the only answer. So our rotational kinematic terms, we have angular displacement, which is going to be theta. Okay, it's going to look like an angle, all right? And this is the change in the angle as an object rotates. Finally, 
we do measure this in radians, but we will not be using any trig. So we're still not going to be doing any cosine of 2 pi or sine of pi, etc., or pi over 2. We're not sitting here. Yes, we have to look at this in terms of maybe somewhat of a unit circle. When something rotates 2 pi, that means it does rotate all the way around the circle. Okay, 2 pi is a full circumference, all right, um, if the radius is 1, right. Um, so that's what we are basically going to be looking at. We do need to make sure we know how to convert between radians and, um, or sorry, rotation, yeah, radians essentially, rotational uh, units to, to linear and linear to rotational. So we will, you will see this measured in radians. The thing is, it'll look like a regular number. We're not going to keep the pi in the number. We're going to say this has traveled six radians. Obviously, we will have to maybe understand what that means, um, how, how far that is uh, in terms of a circle as we continue to move forward. We have angular velocity. The symbol there is omega. That symbol, this little w, is the lowercase omega. It's again telling you how, some, how quickly something is rotating, its rotational speed. All right? The standard formula, if it's rotating at, this is for if it's rotating at a uh, constant speed, would be theta over time. Okay? Just like velocity is distance over time, angular velocity would be theta over time, measured in radians per second. What's next? Angular acceleration, measured as alpha, or not measured, uh, the symbol being alpha. Again, telling me how quickly something is speeding up rotationally. Is it, are you spinning that faster and faster and faster and faster? All right, we're going to use merry-go-rounds as a good example. We're gonna, I'm going to show one quick video as well. But the idea is, obviously, if the object continues to slowly pick up speed as a merry-go-round starts from rest and then gets faster and faster and faster, that would be that it has some sort of rotational acceleration. So again, this is where I'm referring to the fact that we have two different, uh, we have analogs. Displacement, I mean, I, should, I have it written as D. Technically, we should label it X. Okay. But linearly, displacement is measured in meters, but angularly, we're looking at it in terms of radians. The way to convert between the two is to basically multiply the radius times the, the rotational analog. Okay, so, uh, so if I wanted to change regular displacement into angular displacement, I would have to do angular displacement equals d over r, distance divided by the radius. Okay, basically almost looking at like the distance along an arc type of thing, but we don't, that's not used too much. Okay, but you can go through all of them. You see velocity, you can see acceleration. The one that actually is used a decent amount would be the conversion between velocity, linear velocity, and rotational velocity. That's the, that's really the only one that I've ever seen used. I mean, the other ones are there just so we know in case it happens to ever show up for the first time. But um, the velocity equals r omega. You will see that in some of the problems that you'll be working on. That'll be an important part in terms of maybe justifying uh, when we get to energy, when we look at momentum. A couple of different things. Excuse me. Oh, yawning. Okay. So, sorry. That was the V equals R omega would be an important one to remember. Obviously, omega then would be V over R. All right. So, the thing is, if we all, if everything basically means the same thing, if rotational acceleration is essentially the exact same concept as linear acceleration, you already know all the kinematic equations we're about to do. All we're going to do is replace them, replace all the linear symbols with rotational symbols. So you can see here, this would be final velo angular velocity equals initial angular velocity plus angular acceleration times t. Okay? That's the same thing as you all know, I'm not going to do this for all of them, as just Vf equals V naught plus At that we learned at the very beginning of the year. So I'm going to do that with the other three. Or the other three, the other two, right? All right. So, I mean, that's the thing. is We already know the formulas. We already know. We just have to replace the symbol with its appropriate analog is all I'm looking at there. And, again, we're in radians. Radians, radians, radians is what we're referring to. And all these are referring to how quickly something is spinning along an axis. Okay. 
not around the circle. I'm not talking about something we could obviously look at. The, that's, that's the issue we're going to run into, is we might be looking at both linear and rotational velocities. All right? This is not, I want to make sure it's clear, this is not rotation around a circle. This uh, circular motion, as we covered, is linear motion, even though that kind of seems kind of obvious. You're going, it's not a straight line. But the idea is, that's why we call it translational. You're moving from one position to another. What's going to happen is, instead, you basically have a person, and they're rotating along their own, you know, torso. I mean, basically, their center. It's a ballerina spinning, an ice skater spinning, I mean, some a dancer spinning. I mean, any of those we're referring to. We can also, you know, refer to basically somebody being on a merry-go-round, that they're going around and around and around. But now we're referring to possibly both angular velocity and linear velocity. You've got to pay attention to the question involved with this. Okay. So, since we have all these kinematic values, guess what? We're going to have to do rotational kinematic graphs, but guess what? You already know all this. Okay. Angular displacement versus time. Well, on a displacement versus time graph, the slope is velocity. On an angular displacement versus time graph, the slope is angular velocity. Okay? Angular velocity versus time graph, the slope is angular acceleration. The area underneath a velocity time graph would be the change in displacement, angular displacement. Okay? So all of this stuff continues to hold true in terms of how we're trying to approach these problems. Okay, if you're given a graph. So I mean again, if we look at this one, we can go, okay, what would be the uh, that you can tell this is first off a velocity time graph, angular velocity time graph. That means the slope is acceleration, so alpha along the slope would be 20 divided by 2. This would be 10 radians per second squared. Right here, the alpha, the acceleration is 0. At the top here, we would say at this point, the object is spinning or rotating at a constant speed. Over here, we are obviously rotating faster and faster. It is accelerating. Rotating, rotating faster. Okay. It, it, somebody's maybe actually spinning it. Actually, somebody has to be spinning it. There has to be some sort of what we're going to call torque acting on the object. If I want to know how far this has rotated, if there's a spot on it that I'm watching, how many radians has it rotated? That, I would take the area under the line. So the, the, the displacement, the change in displacement for the first two seconds would be 1 half times 2 times 20. So there would be 10 radians displacement. Okay? 10 radians displacement. Okay. Right? Good. Uh, there's no questions there. Okay. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry, there are actually questions with it. I didn't look ahead. That's okay. We already talked about the give the quick description, and we already figured out what the angular acceleration was, and we found the angular displacement. All right. What about direction? Okay, we're going to continue talking about rotational analogs are vectors as well, in terms of the same idea. There are two directions that something can go. We're going to say something can be rotating positively or something can be rotating negatively. Okay, so they are vector quantities. The directions, though, instead of saying up, down, or left or right, as we do in translational, I think you guys can figure out, is going to be clockwise and counterclockwise. All right? That is very important to pay attention to when they tell you to interpret a graph. On that last graph that we saw in a question on the test, they would probably say, consider positive as clockwise, and then obviously start explaining. If it goes into the negative end of the graph, that means the object is spinning in a counterclockwise direction. So we've got to pay attention to how things are defined, all right, is what we're looking at. All right. So again, just like we didn't say up is always positive or down is always negative, clockwise and counterclockwise can be either positive or negative depending on how the problem or how you define the problem. So make sure you define what is positive and what's negative if it's not, if it's not told to you. So we have a practice problem here. I think this is basically it already. That's what we're looking at. A person on a merry-go-round starts with an angular velocity of 10 radians per second. After five seconds, the person is now going 20 radians per second. I think we have two questions, actually, we're going to do. 
What is the angular acceleration? So let's run through this real fast. Okay. I am given the final omega, the initial omega, and the, uh, excuse me again. I want alpha. So this would be final omega equals initial omega plus alpha t. Basically, alpha equals final minus initial over time. So this would just be 20 minus 10 divided by 5. So that would be 2 radians per second squared. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, no questions there. Well, who can ask questions, right? What am I saying? What's the angular displacement? Okay. You can again still finish up with using the angular acceleration. Um, you're actually there is no other formula. I mean, there is technically a formula, but I don't. We don't use it that often in AP physics, so I'm going to ignore it. So now that we know that this is two radians per second squared, I can use the displacement formula to figure out the answer for this one. So I would say maybe I would do the omega squared equals omega naught squared plus two two alpha omega. 2 AD, if you remember from the linear. So this would be 20 squared equals 100 squared plus 2 times 2 times alpha. So this would be 400. Sorry, this is 10. 400 equals 100 plus 4 omega. This would be 300 equals 4 omega. And then we can solve. So that would be, if I get the official answer there, that would be 75 radians. Okay. All right, this is, I think, the last question. Another person is closer to the center of the merry-ground. What could be said about the closer person's angular velocity compared to that of the outer person? Okay. What could be said about their linear translational velocity? This is a very common question. This is where I was saying that they like to have you compare what's happening in terms of rotational versus linearly. Okay? So what you need to think about here is both people are going to be rotating on this circle at the same speed. I'm going to try to show a video very quickly with that. All right? That means when people are on the same circle, it doesn't matter where they are, their angular velocities are going to be the same. Okay? But as we talked about with circular motion, the one that's farther away from center is going to be going faster linearly okay? because more distance, more linear distance covered over the same amount of time. The angular velocity is just going to be the rotation that occurs over time and they're both rotating together so there is no difference between those two. Okay? So that's something just to be aware of. One other side note before I show you the quick video, I just want to make sure this is clear. Basically, one revolution is equal to two pi radians. Okay? Whenever you see one rotation or one revolution, it's equal to two pi is what you're looking at there all the time. That's one complete circle okay, is what we're looking at. So, if I can, let me check real fast. Yep. Let me go back to this. I just want to show you kind of a little bit clearer the idea that I'm trying to talk about here. Sorry. Go here. All right, again, this is from direct measurement videos. This is not mine. I want to make sure I give credit to direct measurement video. All right, but what I want to show you here is that the, the exact question we just talked about very briefly, okay, is that you have these three dots. And if I st let's start going, okay, they all rotate together. By the time that it takes the blue dot to get all the way around is the same time that it takes the black dot to get all the way around. So all the dots have the same angular velocity, but they have different linear velocities because the blue dot has to travel a larger distance to go all the way around in one circle, in one period of time. So that's what I mean by the angular velocities and the linear velocities might be different. You will get other questions about whether the accelerations are the same or different, so I mean, but it, that's what we basically have to look at. It's usually the angular quantities are the same, but the linear quantities are not the same. All right? So that it is. That's it. Thank you.